Hey everyone and welcome to lecture number two for Remix Music, Art, and Culture. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Walter Benjamin and his concept of aura. Uh, for the week, uh, I'm asking you to read Walter Benjamin's work of art in the age of mechanical reproduction. Uh, that essay is in your week two folder on Google Drive. And also watch uh, the first episode of John Berger's uh, Ways of Seeing. Uh, there's a link in uh, the week two folder. Uh, I'll take you to a YouTube video uh, so you can watch that. Uh, there's also in that folder a description of your collage project, which is your first major project for the course, uh, the post that you have to do this week, and also uh, discussion. So yeah, I'm going to try to have a prompt for all the assignments for the week in each of the week folders from now on. So uh, Walter Benjamin's work of art in age and mechanical reproduction, uh, written first version in 1936. Uh, so this week I've asked you uh, to read one of the most influential essays on media in the 20th century. And uh, if you've started already, you may have noticed it isn't particular, particularly easy. Uh, at its base, Walter Benjamin's uh, essay is trying to think through the effects of photography on culture as Hitler was rising to power in Germany. Uh, Benjamin felt that mechanical reproduction of images would politicize art, uh, opening it to potential uh, revolutionary uses, uh, while at the same time opening it to serve the ends of fascism. There are a lot, there's an awful lot in this essay, and to be honest, I question whether or not it was a good idea to try to teach it in this format, uh, online and all that. Uh, but I think if we're able to focus on uh, one or two parts, uh, then we'll be able to handle it. Uh, so what, what I want you to do is read the entire essay, but focus primarily on uh, Benjamin's concept of aura. And so aura, Benjamin introduces a term on page 221, uh, by that point, He's already explained what it is. His definition actually starts on the beginning of section two. Even the most perfect reproduction of a work of art is lacking one element, its presence in time and space, its unique existence at the place where it happens to be. This unique existence of the work of art determined the history to which it was subject throughout the time of its existence. That's it. And that's basically what uh, aura is. Uh, existence at a place where it happens to be, uh, which then determines the history that it undergoes. So then he talks about how you can track this history through the nicks and scuffs that it gets. So uh, sometimes this is physical, like the wear and tear. You can see the scuffs uh, that happen to a work of art while it's moved, uh, the way that the paint degrades uh, over time, the loss of a limb on a statue maybe. Uh, and it's this undergoing of history, this being present to the passing of time, that Benjamin says, quote, is the prerequisite for the concept of authenticity. Now what Benjamin argues is that mechanical reproduction can reproduce an image exactly, you know, it's exactly, uh, but cannot imbue the copy with a history of the original. So of course each copy will, uh, as it is itself a physical object that exists in time and space, be subject to its own history, but it's not the same history as the object it's derived from. So if you happen to purchase a Mona Lisa mug, uh, your mug may have gone through some time, tough times with you but they're not the same as the original Mona Lisa mug paint. The Mo <laughs> it's not the same as the original Mona Lisa that's painted by Da Vinci and is now hanging in the Louvre. So now the next part is tricky. Situations into which the product of mechanical reproduction can be brought may not touch the original work of art, yet the quality of its presence is always depreciated. Here Benjamin notes that the reproduction can bring the image into new situations. So Mona Lisa can now appear in your kitchen and because of that, the, quote, quality of the presence of the original is depreciated. And so essentially standing in front of the original Mona Lisa now isn't as impactful because you've seen the image already is replicated everywhere. Uh, just look on Google Image Search, for example. Now this perhaps sounds bad, that the reproduction of images is harming or devaluing masterworks of art, uh, making us appreciate them less, making them less valuable. For Benjamin, uh, however, this is actually a really promising side effect of reproduction. Benjamin, Benjamin writes, uh, one might generalize by saying, the technique, technique of reproduction detaches the reproduced object from the domain of tradition. By making many reproductions, it substitutes a plurality of copies for a unique existence. And in permitting the reproduction to meet the beholder or listener on its own particular, in his own particular situation, it reactivates the object reproduced. In other words, when the art object is reproduced, detaching it from history and tradition, it can be put to other uses. Where do you find historically significant works of art, usually? Uh, they're in a museum, great buildings with security guards that look like churches, where everyone quietly and reverently observes the originals, the testaments to history. 
for example, this is what uh, it might look like if you were to go see the Mona Lisa in the Louvre. You see a whole bunch of people standing around in front of uh, the original work of art, which is protected by bulletproof glass. There are security guards on each side, and you might not even get that close to it because <laughs> there's so many other tourists there to see it. But once you take that image out of the church, uh, you can do anything with it. And it's testament to all of the weird uh, kinds of Mona Lisa's you can see in Google image search. There's a Lego one, Barack Obama one, uh, even a uh, Johnny Depp one. <laughs> so once it no longer stands in for any particular history or tradition, you can put it on a postcard, for example, or maybe uh, draw a mustache on it like Marcel Duchamp did in uh, 1919, uh, the precursor to all of those uh, Johnny Depp versions of the Mona Lisa. Sometimes it's helpful to remember that Benjamin is writing during the rise of fascism in Germany, uh, which was claiming as its justification a particular version of history and culture. The idea that the reproducibility of art would remove it from the reverent context and traditions, uh, that it would be able to democratize these images so that anyone could see them and think of them what they wanted to, uh, the masses would could react and form their own opinions about them. Uh, they would therefore, as Benjamin says, reactivate uh, the objects. Obviously, we still treat originals reverently, uh, like this, but for Benjamin, this idea that you could put these objects to other ends and read them in your own way, attach new meanings to them, meant that they were open to interpretation. History was now open to interpretation, which means it can go in any direction. Part of the reason this essay is difficult is because it's hard to pin down what Benjamin actually thinks is going to happen. Will the revolutionaries be able to rally mass sentiment around re-energized images? Or will the fascists use them for propaganda? Or will we just get this kind of stuff? Removed from ritual, the meaning of art has now become what Benjamin says is a product of a matter of politics. Now the video I had you all watch, or I'm gonna have you all watch John Berger's Way of Seeing is an interpretation of uh, an interpretation representation of Benjamin's arguments. I hope watching it helps you visualize what Benjamin is talking about. Note at the beginning of the episode when Berger walks up to a priceless piece of art or what looks identical to one and cuts one of the faces out of the refining figures. The move is supposed to be a little shocking. What are you doing destroying this priceless piece of art? Uh, it's a thing you would never do in a museum. It seems to be set up to be this museum scene. But again, the whole point of Benjamin's, Benjamin's piece and Berger's adaptation of it is to question the reverence we've had for art and the social and political effect that reverence has had. You have your first major project this week. It's a collage. Uh, it seems like a simple enough activity. Uh, after all, we have uh, children make collages in, in grade school even. Uh, but after reading Benjamin's piece and watching Berger, I hope you'll uh, be thinking about collage as a much more complex kind of cultural practice. There's a prompt for you in this week's folder on Google Drive. Basically, what I'd like you to do is make a digital collage using either Office tools or Google Drive tools. The images you pick don't need to have anything to do with one another, besides the fact that you pick them and put them together. Uh, and then I want you to write a little reflection on your collage. Uh, what's happened to the images uh, now that they appear together? What would Benjamin Berger say about what you've done? Uh, and so on. Uh, so that project is going to be due at 10 p.m. or by 10 p.m. on Sunday night. Uh, before that, I'd like you to do your weekly post on Wednesday at 10 p at p by 10 p.m. Uh, again, a post is when you start a new direction for our conversation by creating a new post on Google+, Plus that asks a question, breaks down a quotation you found difficult, works through some examples, tries out a theory, something like that. Uh, again, there's a description in the folder. Uh, finally, you have discussion due on Friday by 10 p.m. Uh, discussion, of course, is your response to the other people's posts. I'll post a question after this video and you can respond to that. You might even post a comment on this video. Uh, so basically anytime you're responding to anybody else, that's gonna count as discussion. Uh, just so you know, I'm going to be out of town uh, this week starting Wednesday. Uh, I'll be back on Sunday uh, for my brother's wedding. Uh, as a result, uh, I may not be as happy with my replies, but I should have uh, internet and email. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll also be watching and contributing discussion while I'm there. Uh, just maybe not as quickly as I'd like to uh, if I were just at home. Uh, so uh, it may also mean that your video next Monday is delayed, but I certainly hope not. I'm going to try to get up as soon as I can. 
So thanks everyone. This has been lecture number two for Remix Music Art and Culture. Have a great Memorial Day and I'll see you next week.